Oh, welcome back. It is episode 79. Ladies and gentlemen, today's guest, the the esteemed guest, Claire Alexander. Claire, how are you doing today? I'm lovely. How are you, Franklin? Absolutely fantastic, even though we've went through all these trials and tribulations <laughs> with the podcast before we've even gotten it off the ground. Tell them, what, tell them what's going on. Um, so I got AirPods, and uh, everything just went downhill from there, pretty much. Oh, did you mean yeah. what's going on in general or what's going on with the podcast? <laughs> what's going on? What's going on with the podcast? I mean, my Wi Fi is oh. cutting in and out. I'm about to b- drive to my friend's driveway and sit there and just mooch off his Wi Fi or go to McDonald's and record it there in the bathroom or something. And, you know, it, your AirPods are going in and out. You got all this money now. You're acting like you don't know me. You're avoiding my calls. I mean, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, no, it's just that once you get AirPods, you just like, you can't go back to your life beforehand. And, um, you're just, you know, frankly, you're just, you're just a wired headphone guy and we're just, you know, it's just, we can't be friends anymore. I think that's what it is really, you know, exactly. I'm living in the future, you know, that's what it is pretty much. Exactly. You're that, you're that cold hearted, uh, witch, you got your heels click clacking down the street. You're avoiding me. I get it. I understand. Yeah. We're just in different leagues right now. Yeah, and I'm extremely famous. And I uh, I did not have to ask my dad for money today at all. You know, <laughs> don't even. <laughs> I would I would never even do that. God, I'm so rich now. Uh. Well, I just got a gig. I just got a pretty high paying gig. I'm gonna be the Grinch this weekend at a uh, charity brunch. Oh my God. High paying at a charity is it is the charity you? <laughs> the, <laughs> Franklin's fund. It is my charity, so I can get yeah. internet at my house. <laughs> internet at my. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's that's good. I'm still trying to figure out what type of Grinch I want to be, though. I mean, there's the Jim Carrey one, and no one's going to be Jim Carrey. I'm not going to act like I'm Jim Carrey, but the suit is like that new Benedict Cumberbatch Grinch. I don't know if you saw that. No, I haven't. I actually also, you know, I also haven't seen uh, the Jim Carrey Grinch. I've only ever seen the animation one. That was the one we watched at my in my household growing up was the animated one pretty much every year. That and like Charlie, we would watch the Charlie Brown stuff. And then my mom would say, OK, now go back, finish your homework. And that was my childhood. <laughs> Holy cow. Did you not watch like any Christmas movies or were you just subjected to like the cartoon Christmas ones? Um, Pretty much. I feel like uh, I feel like and this is not like bad about my parents. Like, don't get me wrong. I had an excellent childhood. You know, I, everything was great. But like, I think, um, I think my parents were are really set in their ways of like what they like when it comes to music. And um, like my mom only wears the same color of nail polish that she's been wearing for the past like 40 years. Um, and like, is it maroon? Yeah, okay, maybe 40s. Is, yeah. Yeah. It's like a red maroon kind of color. And, I know um, that age range woman. I know that age range woman. Yeah, yeah. That's it's my like target on you. Woman th- yeah, that's, that's your demographic. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think my parents are just very, like, comfortable. With, like, we've always listened to the same Christmas music. Like, they, I, I think it might be an, a, like, adult parent thing. It's just, like, the second you have kids, like, you just don't like anything new from that point on, mm. uh, maybe. So, like, I always watched, so, like, the Christmas stuff I watched was the stuff that they watched. And then, uh, and like sometimes if I was lucky, like on a Friday night, we watched like Fred Claus. My parents hated it. And they were like, we're never, we're never watching a new Christmas movie again, you know, because Vince Vaughn ruined Christmas for everybody in my family, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Not really oh, man. open so to Christmas, trying Christmas new vacation. Christmas vacation is the moon to your family. Yeah, basically. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean the moon? Like it's out there, like elf like and Christmas vacation. Like that's oh yeah, foreign territory. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Foreign territory. Never gonna visit, and uh, <laughs> it's not in this lifetime. You know. You being a funny um, person, you've never watched the comedic stylings of Will Ferrell and Elf. I've seen I've seen Elf, but like I had to watch it at a friend's house. You know, like it was uh. a it, it was a sleepover movie, like. And then I made my parents watch it, and they were like, "It's okay." And we started watching Anchorman one time, and they were like, oh, I don't. "They, they, um, my mom just really doesn't like goofy, silly stuff, which yeah. is the opposite of me. I live for, I, and the older I get too, I feel like the more I love goofy comedy. You know, like that's why you know you and me we love Thirty Rock so much because it's just yes. so like out there and goofy and unrealistic like i think that um 
you know, and I think that's one of my favorite types of humor. And, and when I write jokes and stuff, I, I, I want to write something completely outlandish. Like, like I was talking to my dad months ago. I said, this is one of the best jokes I've said in a while. Uh, it was just a conversation with my dad, but he was like saying how someone at his job tested positive for coronavirus. And he's like, um, yeah, now we all have to get tested for it. And I was like, yeah. And what if it's, uh, um, or, oh my gosh, what did I say? I said, um, I was like, oh yeah. And yeah. And what if you can catch it from him? You know, or actually, it's, I don't know. What if it's, uh, what if it's airborne or something? I, okay. Now it's not even that funny. Cause I don't remember what I said. Completely, <laughs> but, but it was just like, it, it, what I said was like outlandish and not realistic. Yeah. And I think that's my favorite type of humor is like, um, slapstick like, yeah, stuff I mean, now at this point. Yeah. It's just like, what's like something so false that it's just like, Oh, okay. 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 I, yeah. Okay, you know I, what I mean? Like, so out there, like crazy, just goofy, what, like totally unrealistic, like Wet Hot American Summer kind of, kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, that's funny stuff. I like Wet Hot American Summer. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know that scene where they, <laughs> they have that scene where they like go into town. They're like, yeah, Beth, let's go into town. And then they go into town and they like, ooh, they get some cigarettes and then, ooh, they get some beer <laughs> and then, ooh, they get some Coke. And then they're next to me, you know, they're like, doing heroin in this fucking disgust like and they're like robbing an old lady and then um and then they get in the truck and they come back to camp and then somebody's like oh how was it and they're like ah it's so nice to get away from camp even just for an hour that gets me every single time because it's like that is just like the only purpose of that scene like the the whole movie there's not much of a plot and the whole um, purpose of that scene is just to put a smile on your face you know there's no there's no relevance to anything like that movie is not going to open your mind you know but yeah um lately the kind of comedy i've been into and st- things like that like that's like the sole purpose is just to have fun and i think um i've learned to appreciate that more like uh like same with like broad city too do you watch broad city Oh, yeah. I mean, I look like yeah, Alana yeah. Glazer. Of course I'm going to watch it. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love it. I love it when uh, men like Broad City. I love that because I think it's so funny. And, and it I is. think comedy uh, comes in all forms. I don't care who's presenting it to me. I will watch it. And if it's funny, it's funny. Yeah, there's like too many people that don't feel that way. There's too many people that I feel like um, kind of would would say no to Broad City or Parks and Rec or or uh, uh, 30 Rock because they would be like, um, they would rather just watch The Office for the 30th time because they're more right. comfortable with watching men be funny. And I think that's society. I would, I would honestly much rather way. watch, well, I would much rather watch 30 Rock than The Office. I mean, it's so like, it's, I feel like to me, it's so much quicker and, and, and like it, it takes a little bit more, uh, I hate to use this term, but it takes a little bit more wit to get some of the jokes. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's all about humor. It's not, you watch, you have to, I mean, I watched, I've watched 30 Rock so many times at this point that it's like, I watch it like background noise sometimes, but like, if you want to pay attention to it, you have to like, it's, they don't spell it out for you. It's like, you know, when you see like a a meme that you only understand because you've been looking at memes for 10 years, that's what 30 (laughs) Rock is. 30 Rock is a meme of a TV show and like you can only like it if you are really into comedy, I think. Yeah, um, it's definitely comedy and that's nerd why, stuff. Yeah, I think, and that's why it went on for so long, even though it like it was kind of notorious for not being that good of a show. Um, it went on for so long because it like won a lot of awards, and the community loved it because everyone was like, "This is so good," because it's it's all about writing and right. and the jokes are every every line is a joke like there's no there's no lines that are not like there's no straight man in the entire show um no and that's like even amazing. even whenever like they try to get donaghy to be the straight man he still says like outlandish things oh my god yeah my mom thought i was talking to my mom about it and my mom was like oh i thought alex baldwin's character was a straight man i was like absolutely not like he's just he's like just this crazy crazy republican guy 
you know, and then he'll say, and yeah. then I, I love that because I mean, I'm like super liberal. And so I love, I love that that is like, a th- and they just also, the main thing about 30 Rock is they just don't, they don't give a darn hoot about anything. You They're can just, say whatever you, you know. want. Don't feel like, because I don't curse on here, you don't have to not curse. <laughs> no, I was, I, I, what I like to do sometimes is just not swear and just say funnier things. <laughs> oh, okay. I get it. One joke, I, yeah. I mean, I, on the entire E! channel, this whole, like, Thanksgiving weekend was just, uh, uh, what do you call it? A marathon of 30 Rock. And yeah. one of the jokes killed me as it always does, but I made sure specifically when this episode was coming out, I'd sit there and watch it. It was, uh, Liz comes into, uh, uh, Jack's office or Tracy's office or somebody starts yelling at Jack and, uh, and Jack's like, Liz, am I a bad guy? And, uh, she's like, Jack, I heard you yell guards, seize him. And he goes, I was at a Knicks game. They needed him foul <laughs> or something like that. It's just funny <laughs> stuff to me. Guards, seize episode. And, and, and it's like, I could totally see him at a basketball game, just yelling guards, seize him. Like, like he's like some like formal dude. Oh yeah, no, exactly. That's that's so Jack Donaghy. There's this, there's one episode. Oh my god, and his his mother is like that too. She's even funny, and it's really funny when he talks to his mother, um, too, because it's like, oh, I didn't know she could be more crazy than him. There's this one episode when when he's dating uh, this the the congresswoman Cece, and he's on the phone with his mother, and he's like, her name is Cece, and he's like, uh, and then she's like, well, is she Spanish? And he's like. What if she was mother? <laughs> and it's like Jack, what? <laughs> I I just watched the yeah. uh, I watched that episode where uh like they find out like she had like some like mistress or something like that. What was it like? What? She, oh yeah, the, the is it the end towards the end of the show where she when she died and are you talking about exactly. that one or? Yep. That's yeah, it. yeah, and she had she had like a girlfriend thing going on. No, oh, yeah. And Jack's like, what? There's, my mom was dead. That was weird. I was like, that's so crazy. Do you think that was like a, also, that was like a forced? That was a forced thing. I think. I mean, I love Thirty Rock, even their forced things. I genuinely feel that way. Like, I <laughs> one day I hope to be in a relationship with someone that makes me feel the way Thirty Rock does, because I'm just like, even when you guys half ass, <laughs> even for its yeah, even, love it even for its even, fault. Yeah, even when I even when I see even when there's an episode that I'm like, this was like not this was like a little lazy writing. I'm like, this is still like the best of the laziest writing I've ever seen. You know, like yeah. um, I like I, I just thought that was uh kind of not like Colleen's character because she she is so like tell my son I love him but not in a queer way. You know, right? Um, she's very like I don't know. I mean, it was funny, but. Like I, I didn't think it aligned really well with her character, but um, I don't know. I still I liked that episode though because then they're laying in the bed and they're like, "Why did we never hook up?" And I was like, "Yes, thanks for talking about this for once in your lives." Um, I like whenever they have at the end of like uh, one episode they play like that uh, one Republic song and they glance into each other's eyes. It's like one of those like yes, well, they yeah. it's a joke. Yeah, and, and and she's like, uh, and he's like, the only person I want to make a show with is you. And she's like, the only person I want to make a show with is you. <laughs> exactly, That's exactly. Crazy. It's funny. It's funny that we're talking about relationships and stuff like that a little bit, uh, because uh, the other day my mother and I took a walk in the park, and we were talking. I was like, yeah, mom, you know, I just don't foresee myself getting married for a very long time, maybe not even ever. And she was like, and I was like, because like, I would, I, I would, I don't want to be the type of guy that's on like marriage three and four. Not that there's anything wrong yeah, with that. Yeah. I just don't want to do it. And so yeah. I said, if I gave myself to someone in that sense, like married them. And she thought I was talking about sex, which was really funny. And I said, <laughs> if I gave myself to somebody in that way, it would kill me if we got a divorce. Like I would probably never love again. And she was like, right. And there's so many diseases out there. And I was like, mom, that's not what I'm <laughs> talking about. Oh, so that's she, so funny. That's that's where that's where I'm at in terms of uh, relationship stuff. You're talking about how you want them to be like uh, make you feel like Thirty Rock. I just don't want them to uh, to uh, to leave me. That's it. Just don't yeah, leave me. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm sick of. Uh, <laughs> I get broken up with so much, Franklin, um, to the point that like the most recent time that happened to me that we were talking about before this, 
um, I sent a friend what I said to the person I was like, you know, getting broken up with by and they were like, Oh, yeah, you wrote that really well. And I was like, Yeah, thanks. I'm getting really good at this. I've done this. <laughs> Several times. It's, it's really not, good I, at getting I'm, broken up. I'm with. Not, oh. Yeah, I'm not like sad about it. It's just like it's um honestly. I mean, like yeah, I like I'm a little, a little sad about like the instance, but I'm not sad about it as a whole because I'm like 24. You know, like right. we're, we're young. I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not like concerned about it. I don't know. Um, I would like to get married one day. Um, yeah. To you. Um, I'm oh well, obviously uh, everybody, like, know, everybody knows. Obviously. Everybody knows. Like, everybody knows we're getting married. It's a will they won't they? Of course they will. Um, I would like to get married <laughs> one day, probably. I want to, and I. Are we I, doing a church? My, are we doing a church or a beach or a forest? Where are we getting married at? Um. Oh, definitely. Oh my God. Well, when you move to New York City, uh, we'll get married in New York City. I know exactly where I would like to get married. I think maybe it's in Prospect Park. This is what all girls are like, by the way. <laughs> um, it's not a crazy thing. You know what? I actually realized I was like, wow, I didn't realize how not crazy I was until I went to college and I would be hanging out with my girlfriends and they would all pull up pictures of the engagement rings they wanted. And I was like, what? Mm. And they're like, yeah, Claire, what do you want? And I was like, oh my God, I've never even thought about that in my life. And they're like, well, at least you at least know your wedding dress. And I was like, what? <laughs> like like all- in my brain, I thought they just like picked that out like after the fact. Like they haven't. Oh my God. Before. Yeah. No, the, I, um, I, yeah, all my friends, like, know what wedding dress they want, what wedding ring they want. I, I am, I, like, I don't really think about it that much. I, but, like, when I, you know, I've been in enough conversations that I've been like, oh, yeah, I like this, I like that. And I am in a Facebook group that roasts wedding rings. Wow. Um, Wow. So, yeah, but I swear to God, I'm, like, not crazy. Um... (laughs) But, um, no, I mostly do that actually for like a comedy writing exercise. Uh, hmm. I'll wake up. I used to do this. I haven't done it in a while, but I used to wake up and I would go on Facebook and then I would try to roast rings so that I could, you know, just like write jokes. And, well, is um, this, Im- I mean, uh, uh, going to comedy stuff, I mean, is this improving your roast skills? I mean, since we've, since you've done this show and I'm going to take full credit here, I mean, you have <laughs> definitely expanded your reach. You've definitely, uh, grown in popularity and i can't help but think it has uh has to do with uh, this show here you know oh it's definitely 100 percent. everything good in my life happened after the first time i was on this podcast um for sure actually yeah the last time i was on this podcast i was living in a different apartment um and then i moved to an awesome place in williamsburg and um and then, yeah, I've, I've been, I got to the point where I'm like doing, like, there were, there have been a couple of weeks in the past few weeks that I did like eight shows in the whole week. And, Holy um, cow. yeah, last Saturday I did four shows in one day, which is like the most I've ever done. And that was honestly, that was hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean uh, i honestly would have been like exhausted just saying the same thing over and over four times giving it giving it my all yeah i mean like it was it was hard because it was like i did the first three and then by the third one i was like sometimes you know when you perform for like a long time um your brain kind of wanders and you like forget what you're talking about like for instance earlier in this conversation when I forgot the word contagious in my joke about that I was telling my father and now it's beating me up um yeah the, the thing was he was he was like oh you know we have to find out if I have the disease and I was like yeah and if it's contagious you know and that was really funny. that's good that's good yeah thank that's you thank delivery. you that was a that was a good joke <laughs> and um stuff that's yeah. so like uh, stuff that's so riddled with like truth but you say it like sarcastically that's good stuff yeah, no, you say it like, you say it like so seriously. Well, I, I think the way I say it is like so seriously. And then, but it's like something that is gobbledygook, but like with serious intent. And that's my favorite kind of joke. Like, um, like, uh, like, I don't know. Um, oh, this is a joke I wrote just now. Again, um, it's sad news, but like, I'm fine. But like, uh, yeah, when I recently got like kind of broken up with the guy was like, I hope we can still be friends. 
And I was like, yeah, of course we can. You know, if you change your mind and realize you're in love with me, you know, then yeah, we can definitely uh, be friends. <laughs> I, so I don't think there's ever a possible. I mean, maybe <laughs> people can be friends with people after they break up. But like, I don't know. I think that's a tough, that's a tough line to walk. I think you can be cordial, but you can never go back to being, to having deep conversations with them. I don't think. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I think every situation is, is different, but um, I think, I think, my favorite my favorite type of joke to tell though is is definitely to say it in that way i think like say things like yeah because i'm like really really pretty and uh you know that's like one of my favorite right ways to like to to tag my own jokes is that somebody called me out on that recently they're like claire you always tag your jokes with uh i'm so pretty and i was like yeah i mean uh, am i wrong um it's, am it's, i wrong it's, uh, what is it called <laughs> What do you call it? Uh, manifesting. You're like you're just like putting yeah, it out there. Manifest- like I am really pretty. Yeah. I am really pretty, and everyone agrees all the time. Yeah. But I've been um, doing that yeah. lately. Actually, I've been writing down on paper like things. I'm trying to to do some the law of attraction where I'm putting myself on a path. Here I get into my weird spiritual thing, but I'm putting myself on a path to to uh, achieve the things that I want to achieve. Affirming it. Oh hell yeah! That's so cool. I love that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. What, are, what, are you been, what have you been writing down? I have been writing down, if you want to get really deep, hold on, let me pull up my yellow legal pad full of notes. One second. I got to flip through the pages. We need the elevator music here so I can get to the right page. <laughs> okay, here it is. Here it is. Uh, here I wrote last night. Here's what I did. Here's my, was my nightly routine last night. Uh, I got in my bed and I watched a John Mayer concert. And whenever he took a break in the middle, I went to sleep. But during the concert, every now and again, when I had a, a thought, I would write it down. And I said, I'm a great comedian. I'm a successful comedian. People love me. I love me. Uh, comics respect me. And I wrote that down. That's Those are the things I wrote down. Oh, I love that. And it's true. That's that's really what I want to do is just be respect, have a good career, and be respected by my peers. That's really it, you know. Yeah, I don't like I I one of the things I hate the most in comedy, and I I genuinely feel like, especially with the pandemic, you know, really stripping us to the core of comedy. Uh, I, I've been saying this a lot so much, and I don't know if I said this last time I was on, but like it's even more relevant than it was before that um, the people who are doing comedy right now really, really love it. You know, or they're doing mm-hmm. comedy for the right reasons. And I feel like this pandemic has really almost stripped us of so many people who, who are just like, you know, trying to step on other people to like rise in the ranks and, and are just oh, doing yeah. comedy for the wrong reasons. And, and it's so much more obvious, like, like, I don't know yet. My, my least favorite type of, of uh, a trait, personality trait that I come across is people who are just like, um, just trying to network and just trying to, and, and they're, they're not in it because of the love of the game. Like if you don't go on stage every time and you're like, I love this, then you're doing it wrong. I mean, right. and sometimes granted, sometimes like it doesn't happen like that. Like last week when I did four shows, like, I, I'm not going to lie to you. My third one, I was like, I just got to get this up. out of the it's way. Okay. I'm starving, you know? Yeah. And like sometimes, and, and I actually don't think I did as well on my third show because I was like, my heart wasn't in the game, but it, my heart wasn't in the game because I was like, didn't eat dinner yet and I was starving. But like, I mean, you have to, and it's hard to like, remember that the entire time, no matter like, cause sometimes you're doing 10 minutes, sometimes you're doing 15 minutes and you have to like, really hold yourself to being focused on your love of it. Um, right. But like, I mean, you have to love the hustle. And if you want to be successful, you have to like, love all of it. And um and, take take and, take joy in the uh, in the process of it. Not necessarily look at the sad open mm-hmm. mics as a means to an end, but be like, "This is awesome! I get to do this." Just take pride yeah. in the yeah. That's that's yeah, a big and, thing for me. I had May May Planet on here. Shout out May. Uh, yeah, I love her. And uh, she and I were talking about this type of thing, and I said like, "It's hard for me right now to really respect the people that are in it to try to be like actors." Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's just a personal I mean, thing where I'm at. And I'm sure there's nice people that are out there trying to be actors, but they just want to get their name, I don't know, heard on the comedy stage. And I get that. But like, I like the people that want to be really good comics. That's my that's what I, you know, seek. I mean, I like anyone with a with a goal, I think is like I actually started doing stand up because I started in acting. Like I started doing stand up right. because someone told me that that would be my ticket to 
being an actor. And my opinion has changed now. I've realized that like I love stand up so much more and, and I have so much more control in my career and I can I can do so much more with stand up than I ever could with acting. And as much as I love acting, it's definitely like like I like I I just love being able to write what I wrote and like do it whenever I want. Like that's oh, yeah. stand up so great for that. Um but I definitely think um I, I wouldn't like personally exclude all actor like say that I get bothered by people who want to do it for as actors but I um and I also I also have nothing against people who do it as a hobby like I just I just think I, I just the thing I have the thing that I I get frustrated by is people who are don't do it because they love it you know I think people I think some people what do you think what do you um, think they're doing it then why do you think they they take up stage time Oh, I mean, the amount of times I've been on a dating app, Franklin, and I see a guy who has a picture of him doing stand up and it says, I do stand up and I've never seen him before is so many. And I'm like, I know you don't because I know like everyone who does stand- like in New York, the community, especially right now, the community is small, but it's like, yeah. if I don't know you, like then, then I, then you probably did stand up like two times. And uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with starting stand up and trying stand up. Like, I, but like, I think a lot of people get it. And and also, like, there's, I'm not going to judge anyone for any reason that they got into stand up at all. You know, like, I think that so many people get into it because they like are the funniest guy in the office and whatever. And I, I and like, and then they're a dick for like their first year of stand up. But like, if they keep doing it, like, I have what I have respect for is the hustle. So like, yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. I don't care what you're what your original motivation was just that if you're, if you're doing the hustle now and you love what you're doing and you're, and you're dedicating your time because it makes you happy. Like that's what, that's what I think you should be doing stand up for. I don't think you should be doing it for like your Tinder pictures or whatever. You right. Know? right. Um, because you're not doing the same because we're not, because then that person and me aren't doing the same stand up, you know, like um, that's what I, uh, that's how I feel about that because like, that makes a lot of sense. I suppose I, I suppose I've changed my opinion on that. I should, I should uh, take out the actor's part. And I just, again, <laughs> I do want to double down though, like respecting the, the art and the craft and like wanting to yeah, be, yeah. that's, that's what I really am looking for. Okay. I, I redact, mm-hmm. redact the actor comment. Take that back. <laughs> that's on me. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just like, it's, it's, um it's strange because it's like, it's also, it's really mostly about what you're doing right now. I think what people are doing right now, and I don't mean like right now, like 1130, 2020. I mean like (laughs) what you're doing in the moment, like the effort you're putting in at the current time, you know, not as much as like what got you there or what your motivation is for the future even. Yeah. Um, As long as like you're, I mean like, yeah, I was saying like I hate people who are like, you know, just trying to network, but it's like, um, because I feel like you're thinking about, that's like a sad way to think about the future. Like think about now, like, I mean, I think it's good to network, but it's good to network with like people you love, you know, like network with people yeah. you like Don't just network because someone has credit, you know, you know, talk to people that you enjoy and that's going to make you a better comic. And that's going to, well, I mean, um, these people are your peers and like essentially work colleagues. Yeah. You wouldn't want to piss off the office and at a regular job, you know? No, absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's also weird because I, I feel like so many people like say so many crazy things on social media and stuff too. I, and that, like, that, that part I never got. I understand it's just like any, <laughs> I understand it's just like any job where there's going to be quirks and differences and people are going to like people for other things. But like, I, I don't know, man. I, it just, to me, it's like I if if I don't like somebody's act or something like that, I just leave that to myself. There's no need for me to try to like you know go after somebody's goals or livelihood just because I don't like their act. It's weird. Yeah, no way. I think that like I don't know something I learned from my mom that I will take with me forever. Is she said to me one time she was like, "If there's some if you have something nice to say about some someone, you should tell them." And I think that that goes for like everything. Um, and I think that if you don't have something nice to say, then don't share it, you know, but like if, if you like a comic in particular, you should be like, Hey, I really like your work, you know? And if you hate a comic, you should be like, Hey, what's up? You know, you should, you should not like, <laughs> which is exactly how Claire uh, responded to, to my message about being on the show. She said, Hey, what's I up? Like, 
I was like, hey, uh, I think you're fine. No, I actually said, Franklin, I hate you. And I'm only doing this because you asked so politely. Um, <laughs> I've been no, having I'm a lot saying, of fun. Um, and and since, since you were on here last, you said, like, if you get a chance, I don't know if yeah. this is, we talked for like an hour before and an hour after the last time you did oh the show. God. Like two hours after. Oh, my God. It was crazy. It was so and much hours, fun. We talked for like five hours straight. <laughs> It's fun. And then like, we just don't talk on the internet at all. Like we don't send like messages like, Hey, what's up? Like, it's yeah, just like, yeah. we talk for five hours. That's it. But I, I, I think, uh, the last time you were on here, you were telling me about like the zoom mics and everything. And I was just like, ah, you know, I don't know. But like, I've done, I've done them like since like you've been oh, on yay, here and it's yay, like, good. I think it's a good outlet for, a uh, for, for a person like me, who's not able to be where you guys are, uh, mm-hmm. in, geographically speaking yeah i think zoom is really good and i think we're actually about to go back to zoom i have a feeling um yeah it's probably not it's probably not getting good you know it's probably getting bad yeah there's been like a couple weeks ago some comics tested positive for covid so (laughs) i've even gotten to host i even got to host a a show at the joey joey show uh what is oh yeah you did story time at the hub yeah he let me host he was like yay he was in Vermont and he was like, bro, I need a host. I know you could host, like, just do it for me. And I was like, okay, sure. Whatever. And I went to my friend's house. And oh, that's so great. Hosted. Yeah. It was, it was a ton of fun. What, what was the theme of the, the show that time? Uh, it was work stories. It was, it was actually one oh, I had already okay. done before. So I just told the same story I did again. Oh, fun. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Which I one did you do? You did, did that show, right? Yeah, I did it. I'm going to do it again. I haven't decided which one I want to do, but like I did, um, I did dating. Um, and I told a story that I love that's barely about dating. Uh, it's more about, um, how one time, like, uh, in college, like somehow my, my brand new mattress got like poop all over it. Oh, <laughs> Joey, Joey told me part yeah. of the story. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, did I spice it up for the, the story time thing? Yes. Um, but like, it, it's a very, very funny story and something I really can't believe happened <laughs> because, because it was just like, what the fuck? And every time I tell people that, that didn't go to college with me they're like dude where did you fucking go to college <laughs> like what a crazy place and because and i realized that when i graduated because i would like talk to people i'd be like oh yes i was like blacked out and people were like oh my god were you okay i was like oh yeah no i blacked out like most weekends was, like oh my god really? are you, like, like, that's a tuesday like yeah yeah i was like yeah <laughs> well geez franklin <laughs> tuesdays are for browning out all right tuesdays are <laughs> oh, all right all right my bad yeah well, i, I went to west virginia, my, I I to west virginia. hey I'm yeah, Dubby. that's so much cooler of us. I went to York College of Pennsylvania, which um, was just like a bit definitely. Uh, it, it, this is how I will describe it. One time I was at college and I'm from Connecticut. Right. And one time someone was like, so why don't you just go to community college in Connecticut? That's how I describe your college of Pennsylvania. <laughs> it's community <laughs> college, but in a different school. I mean, in a, in a different state. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, pretty much. Not not that cool of a school. But um, but Joey but, said you yeah. came with high praise. Joey said that that was arguably the best story ever told on Story Time at the Hub. Oh my God, that's so nice of him. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that was I, I really killed it that night. That was really funny, and um, people brought it up to me afterwards. It was definitely I definitely like threw my entire reputation out the window to share that story. But if it makes other people laugh, Hey, that's what I'm about. You know, oh, come on. We're, uh, we're meant to be court jesters. There's no need to hide. Yeah. There's no need to hide anything. I don't really, I remember when I first started comedy, I guess my second time when I started when I was like 21, I was definitely like, I so badly wanted to just be like a hot girl that did comedy. Mm-hmm. And I have grown so much since then in so many ways like I don't care anymore and I'm not like that's not what I'm going for um I just want to be if I could start over again I'd want to be the hot girl comic and then just get 10k (laughs) followers after one mic yeah right and be like oh my god Uh, (laughs) I I mean there's nothing wrong I have a lot of friends that are hot girls (laughs) there's nothing wrong with being a hot girl comic but like no there's not I'm just hey listen they're comics too we're joking with them we're joking yeah yeah 
I just, I really wanted to be like, I really wanted to be like a popular girl. Like, cause in my whole life, I like wanted to be like such a popular girl. And I was like, this is yeah. my chance to be a popular girl. And then like, and I would tell stories on, mm, I was like really drunk or like, mm, you know, I was just like, uh, it was just like, it was crazy. I just like made out with this like really hot Kappa Delta, blah, 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 <laughs> you know, whatever. And now I'm just like, why the, f-? like if I, being myself, being my true self, I'm yeah. so much more cooler than I was when I was trying to be something else. It's I think it's me so... think about like the type of comic I wanted to be when I was first starting out. And when I was first starting out, I think I was like 20, 21. And I was wanting to write these like, I was wanting to make major jokes out of like minor things. Like I was just yeah. wanting to ham up like these tiny things. And I just ended up going out there and not doing that. And then the jokes... I found out that did well where whenever I told these stories. So now I, I like to tell stories. Oh yeah. Now you're, you're turning into a storytelling guy like Joey. Essentially. Yeah. Well, I'm not trying to be like Joe. I'm trying to be better than Joey. Um, <laughs> We're all trying to be better than Joey. Honestly, Let's stick it to him. <laughs> um, I think I saw you did a show with a storyteller that I like. Uh, did you do a show with? I don't think so. <laughs> what? When? I thought I saw your name on a flyer with him. Okay, I'll edit that out. Okay, I thought Maybe. I saw your name. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, you know, no. I just do so many shows, Franco. I'm just, like, so famous all the time. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. It's funny that you call me Franco because, like, you know me. Like, you can call me whatever you want. But I had never had my name put on, like, a formal comedy flyer before. Even one of those crappy internet graphics with 20 pictures on them. Never had my name. Really? Ne- never, never. And even when I was in, you know, uh, you know, um, like my college town and I'd be hosting or, or I would be uh, opening for, for a guy that came in, never had my name on anything. And Joey, oh, wow. put, Joey put my name on, uh, I don't know, like the story time at the hub lineup card. You know, I finally got my name on a lineup card and my name was Franco Aww. Miller. And I was like, that's not oh, my no. name. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That happened to me. The first time that happened to me, I was in Connecticut and my, my Facebook name used to be Claire Louise. Um, cause I, used, yeah, cause that's my middle name and someone put my name on the flyer, on a flyer as Claire Louise, like the first time. And so I reached out and I was like, that's not my name. My last name is Alexander. And the guy was like, are you kidding me? Now I have to change it. Oh, uh, the then, thing is like, I'm yeah, not and then he I didn't want to cause an issue. It. What? I did. I'm such a big wussy. I didn't want to like make Joey or whoever made the oh, yeah. graphic mad. I was like, okay, I'll just take it. My name's on a thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At this point, like, now I, I just, like, take whatever. I, I don't really, I don't care. Um, yeah. But I remember the first time I was, like, oh, um, blah, blah, blah. Because well, it was, like, it was stupid because he, like, messaged me. He's, like, is this right? And I was, like, no, it's not. And he was, like, are you kidding me? And I was, like, wait, well, you asked me. <laughs> you asked me if it was right. So, and then uh, it was a bad gig. And it was, like, I drove all the way to Yonkers. And, like, I, you know, I, I did fine. It, it was, like, it was, I was, like, when I first started, it's so funny because when I first started comedy, I used to like get so dressed up. Like I would not like so dressed up, but like, like I would just like wear nice clothes and I would put on right. makeup. Oh yeah. I was I always button downs. Hair. I would always wear button down shirts. Right. Right. And now like now, now I, I mean, I think I've like grown so much as a person in the past few years. And I think comedy is like completely aligned with that. But like my confidence comes from so many different places now instead of, just like my looks or just like you know the way people perceive me it's more like I think when you start doing comedy you start um really uh cherishing your own work or I don't know if that's comedy or if that's just like no it's comedy we become total and complete narcissists and we think everything we've touched has turned to gold honestly I walk into a room and I'm like you're welcome for breathing your air peasant um (laughs) But no, I mean, like, I think, I, I don't know if it's like comedy or if it's just like the fact that I'm doing something I've never been more passionate about in my life that I like, I'm pulling out work that I'm like actually proud of. And when I, when I do, and then, and so like nowadays, if I do a show, like I'll put on like mascara, which um, I also like don't really wear makeup much anymore just because like it's, yeah, it's just, um, which is so crazy to me because when I was a kid, if I would go to New York City, I'd be like, oh my God, I have to wear lipstick, you know, but now I like live in New York City. And I like don't really even wear makeup that much. And I'm like, wow, look at look at me. I'm so, you know, <laughs> oh my gosh, I've grown so much. And my confidence comes from like 
the work that I've created. And I really like that about myself. I'm really happy with where I am. And we're back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, internet went out. All right, the lights. What is it? The lights went out in Brooklyn. I don't know. The internet. The internet went out in West Virginia. <laughs> we had a blackout. We had <laughs> we had a blackout, and uh, we're gonna talk about comedy a little bit some more. Uh, Claire has uh, obviously, like I said previously, her career has uh, it started to get some traction. You know, things are things are rolling in the right direction, and you've been hosting a show. You've been doing some other stuff with comedy. What's been going on? So um, in about uh, September, or I think it was the very end of August, August 29th, Brittany Cardwell, uh, you had an interview show before, um, and I as, started as, running. As the uh, annoying white pe- white guys like to say on podcasts, friend of the pod. Friend, friend of the show. Friend, good hang. Great gal. Yeah, good uh, hang, yeah. She and I began to run a weekly comedy show. It was originally on my rooftop. Um, How'd you get access? And, uh, we can do, you can just go to my rooftop. Uh, <laughs> no. the, door, the door's open. And, um, yeah, we figured we would do that. Oh, and the show is like, mo- it's like a mostly female lineup and we usually have like a male host. We always, we've, we've always had a male host. Um, but it's just kind of like fun because they're at the beginning of the, when people started doing shows again outdoors, like there were, there's, there were mostly men back in town and I, every lineup I saw had like mostly men on it. And I was like, let's see some ladies. Like women are funny and women have been working so hard. Every woman I know has been doing Zoom mics, outdoor shows, you know? So many men I know were like, oh man, like Zoom is not for me, man. And they're, or like, you know, they're, they're, and it's just, I think women, um, you know, we start comedy um, knowing it's going to be harder for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when the pandemic hit, we were like, yeah, we can take this. Like, this is, you know, we're totally capable of working through a pandemic also. Like I was prepared for this because I, I came into comedy knowing that I wasn't going to have it easy and it's not easy. And I am prepared to like keep pushing through. And, right. um, so that's why I wanted to do that. And it was really great. And it just like made me believe even more than ever that women are so so funny like so funny like i think that um such hard and such hard workers also like and so many women i know are running shows too like i'd I'd say like half the shows being run outdoors i mean not anymore because they're all pretty much shutting down but like half of them are are run by women but anyway so Brittany and i were running a show on my roof and then after our fourth show um, it got shut down by the police. Uh, what? Yeah, Fugitive so the of police, the law. I know, right? Uh, so the police came up to my roof and they were like, uh, who uh, who owns, who lives here? And I was like, I do. And they were like, do you have a permit? And I was like, no. And wow. they were like, this is illegal. And I was like, hey, right, well, do you want me to like, stop it or like what <laughs> like what that's some real that's some real rock and roll comedy we won't take no no for an answer type stuff yeah i was like what i, I mean honestly i would have been more of a badass if i had like the law in my hand because i've learned since that you don't actually need a permit to do that if they were just like looking for a loophole to get it to shut down and if i said if we did have a permit they would be like okay well this is like too big of a gathering of people or something like they were gonna because i think my neighbor oh. called the cops because beforehand my neighbor like came upstairs and she was like it's crazy that you do this every week every saturday and i was like yeah every saturday like once a week get over it you know like <laughs> <laughs> I thought um, you were like, yeah, it's every yeah. Saturday. You should come on up, like try to invite her or something. Yeah, but she was. It was really annoying because she was like, "I get it. Like I was just like you once." And I was like, "No, you're you weren't though. Like you were not." Oh, she was uh, a comic. The only, oh. No, no, absolutely not. I was like, she was like, I was like young in Brooklyn once too, and I'm like, no, this is not. This is the middle of the pandemic. The only venue I've been able to do, the only thing I moved to the city for is not available to me. Like we are not allowed to do comedy indoors. So I do like, this is not something you've been through before, you know? Right. Um, and uh, she was just like, you know, just like, I hate using this term because it's just so cliche these days. But, like, you know, a classic little Karen. Um, oh, Karen. So like, oh, yeah. yeah. So, but then we, so then the show kind of became like a pop-up and we've been, we were like bouncing it around like everybody's, 
uh, roofs and uh, and backyards, and and then we finally like kept doing it a couple times in the backyard of this bodega for a while. Nice. And that was really great. That was great. Um, and uh, our la- we had our last show two weeks ago. And we decided not to do another one because we were like, it's it, we just don't want to like put people. It's the sensible thing. Congregate it's people. Sensible. Yeah, because of the disease right now. Because there's a, there's kind of a spike. But I gotta say, I think that that was like it was the coolest thing I've ever. The two of the coolest things that have happened to me this year were like starting drool with Brittany and um i was in the connecticut comedy festival which was really cool too yeah um, yeah yeah yeah. i remember you uh posting yeah, like uh, fun. your name being on the the flyers yeah the same flyer as like bill burr and mike burbiglia and right, Brian right? Vegan. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was really 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 cool um yeah, that was that was pretty cool, and that was like right after my birthday. And then I went back. They had me go back to the Connecticut Comedy Festival. I was like, okay, I'll go again, and and that was great. And uh, and so yeah, I did that a bunch, and um, and yeah, and then from then on, I kind of just like uh, I, I got to do more shows and stuff, and that was really fun, and and I really enjoyed that. And yeah, comedy's been cool. Oh yeah, and I wanted to talk to you about the roast. The roast. Yeah. Have you ever done a roast before? I have not done a roast. I have been roasted by other comics before, but I have not roasted back. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, thank you. I'll take the feedback. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that. It's like I opened, I was opening for a guy and then the middle, uh, like his first joke, he just like straight up roasted me. I laughed, but like, yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, I've been, I've done a couple lately. I've done three recently and um that i i won all of them and what um, i don't want to go yeah. against you make me cry i well i mean it's like uh i don't know it's so fun i think because it's i i, I like only really like doing it with my friends too like i i don't want to like roast somebody i don't know that's it's true so much more fun if you're with your friend and um i don't know i I really like doing them because I think that they're a really great uh, exercise. This is what everybody says. There's so many comics I know that like won't do roasts because they're like, oh, it's like, because then you have to throw all your jokes out afterwards. And it's like, yeah, but like, who cares? Like all of your jokes, you have to throw out afterwards, you know, like, yeah, like, like it's like, it's just, it's just like an exercise for your brain. It's so much fun. And it's, um, You've used that term. You've used that term a couple times in this episode. Exercise. What Uh are some of these exercises that you do? I mean, you have the roast. You have the mocking engagement rings. What else do you (laughs) do? Oh, um, I don't know. I think I I think good ways to exercise your material are definitely like in conversations with people for sure that don't do comedy and stuff. You know, Um, just really see. I mean, I feel like once you start dedicating your life to comedy, everything you do that makes somebody laugh, you like make a mental note of, and you're like, all right, that was good. Um, Yeah, just like hanging out with people and like remember to writing. I don't know. I think um, comedy fight club, like roasting stuff. That's uh, that's a good. What other exercises do I do? I don't know. I need to write more. I don't sit down and write as much because my job takes up so much of my time. But yeah. Um, I've been forcing myself to like write at least one thing, like one joke, one quick little line, like every every day, every night, you know, on paper. I mean, yeah. I make notes on my phone, but to like formally write them, like that's what I do. I write them pen and oh, paper. Oh yeah, like that's I, pen and paper. I pen and paper is like if somebody when I first the first time I did stand up comedy when I was like seventeen years old, uh, I was told like you should write because it's slower to write than type. And that way, if it's taking longer, it'll take you, like, you'll have more time to fully think of the thought. But my favorite way to write jokes, now, I don't know what you do, and I've been told that this is, like, I don't know many people who do it this way, but, like, my favorite way to do it is, like, I'll sit down, I'll start writing, and then I'll actually just start talking out the bits, and I'll stand up, and I'll get excited, and I'll just start, like, riffing out the bits by myself in my room. Ooh. I think that's my favorite yeah, it's my favorite way to 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 write comedy is to like just practice by actually just talking. 
um, talking it out and stuff. I don't know. And I like, um, that. I like that. Maybe get the hairbrush, yeah, talk fine. in the mirror. Oh yeah, don't don't I know it? I have a million pictures of me with the hairbrush. <laughs> <laughs> um and just like practicing my material um that's just a good way to write tags i think is just like run your own bits and and also no, I was like such a pretentious, I was such a pretentious tool in college when it came to writing because i would write and pen and paper you know and and it would be like saturday night everybody's going out and partying and i'm like look at me i'm in my apartment <laughs> writing and i post it on oh my like an instagram story or something like that and it's like i do this instead of doing what everybody else does i'm so cool oh my gosh i did that too except for i would go out and then i would come home and i'd be drunk and then i would write on my i would write and i remember one time posting it on my like snapchat story eight million years ago being like Ugh late night comedy writing and i'm looking like knowing that i had knowing I'm just that i'm gonna rip my hair was, out thinking that i did that i, I mean know. i had i had my jazz so music playing crazy. in the background i thought i was so refined and so much different oh my god i think it's so important to like like not i, I think that there are some times when you have to like say no to like partying and stuff because it's like no i have to work on comedy like um, like when Biden uh, won the election, people were like partying in the streets. But I, it, Brittany and I had drool, and we also were roasting each other that night. And I Ooh. hadn't even written any jokes yet. Yeah, so I was like, I can't party because of these prior commitments I've made, which was a sad sacrifice to make. I'm proud like, of you, though. That's, I'm proud of yeah. you. Yeah, and that's. I mean, I did. I did like party a little in the morning, and then I like got my shit together and whatever. But like I. Uh, I think that, you know, sometimes you have to say no, but I also think sometimes like, like say yes, like you don't have to like cut yourself off from enjoyment of life because comedy is all about enjoying your life and enjoying that time on stage. Like right. we were saying earlier, like, like, um, I don't know. I think that, uh, I think that my dad always used to say to me and like, he'd be like, uh, you can have fun later kind of stuff. like, and I've never felt that way. I, I disagree. I think that. You should find something that you love that is fun now and you, mm -hmm. you can be able to enjoy it the entire time you're doing it. And by that, I don't mean like watch TV every day and then you'll be a comedian. <laughs> like that's not how that works. I mean, like, in, like if you enjoy doing comedy, you can have fun and make that your life. Yeah. And then it will be even more fun when you start making money from doing it and stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't I, know. I, I think that. Uh, I think like you can, I think you can party and do comedy. I gotta stop partying. I keep partying so much. It's all good. I mean, you, you, at least you know it's it's first step is admitting. I mean, I don't gamble anymore. Uh, <laughs> it was taking up a lot of my creative energy because I would run these statistical analysis and I would do these simulations of games to see who's gonna win. And I check. I was on six different books, like checking scores and stuff like that oh all day God. on my phone. And and what? it's like, and it's like wow. It's like then I stopped for a couple of weeks and it's like, wow, like I'm thinking more clearly. I'm being, I feel like I'm funny again. I'm not focused on a score all the time, you know, but I, I mean, I'm a big, like my past, my last two years in college. And then when I, then when I took that job near Philly, I just like committed myself to be a yes man because my whole life I had been a oh, no wow. man and, and being a yes man opened me up to so many more opportunities and put me in like, some sticky situations and some funny stuff happen, but it may like uh -huh. these experiences are going to make you a better comic. They're going to make you able to relate to people more and understand stuff. So I'm big. I'm a big proponent of being a yes man. It's okay to say yes to things. Oh, I'm like, I'm trying to learn to be the opposite. I say yes. I've, I've always been a yes man. And then sometimes it gets me in sticky situations though. Cause the other day, you know, some, some people like give you drugs and then you're like, yeah, are you sure? I've never done that. Like, okay, well, I don't do anything that jeopardizes my soul. <laughs> I don't do anything that jeopardizes my soul. All right. Yeah, I, I, but I, I, I am right. I think you got the right mindset, Franklin. You know, that's exactly, that's exactly the best way to live your life is to like, from what I know. And, and this being said, I'm you know 24 years old, and we I, are the know, same age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm about to say something deep, but I am fully aware that I that, that we're children, and uh, these, our opinions might change tomorrow. But yeah, um, I, that also I needs to be normalized. That, normalized being able to change your opinion based on new information. You know. Oh, so true. So true. You know, I I feel like I've learned so much in especially in the past few years that has changed my opinions about so much. And the, the things that I thought when I was 16, 
the things I thought when I was 16, I would go back and beat myself up if I had the opportunity. Oh my God. Yeah, I know. There's so many opinions I remember having. And I remember I like, look back and I'm like, why would I ever view the world that way? Why would I ever view other people that way? Why would I view myself that way? Right. You know, why would I, you know, I think that, but I think that the, one of the best ways to live, yeah, also we should normalize like 24 year old people being wise, you know, <laughs> With the, we, we know what we're talking about. We're happy people. I, I'd say I'm happier than a lot of 30 year olds I know. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's because, um, not just because of, you know, what I'm prescribed, but I think it's because <laughs> of, I think it's because of, I, I really say yes to a lot of stuff and I mm -hmm. um, am not really afraid to take chances and yeah. um, I have a sh I have like a job that is not like serious to me so I have nothing to lose at all times I feel like and I think um, I don't know I think I think part of I think I was lucky that I grew up fairly you know with, with like a really stable family um, oh yeah like like with with like in terms of money like i think I, sometimes i think about that and like maybe that's why i really don't care about money as an adult maybe that's why i'm like because everyone's always like oh you gotta make money doing comedy but i'm like I, I, that's not why i'm doing it at all um, oh so that might yeah be, same so i might like not value yeah but like i think that the best thing you can do is just like follow your dream and um if i lost my voice tomorrow or if i like you know, if I, if something happened to me and I couldn't do comedy anymore, I would be so proud because I know I I gave it all of my all that I ever possibly could, and um, yeah, that's that's that was all deep. You have to do. That was deep. <laughs> I know. I told you. <laughs> I know. I do that. I have yeah. a tendency to do that sometimes, where I get on here. My most recent episode, I literally read a poem. I just like never write a poem before oh my ever. Gosh. And I wrote a poem and I read it on air. You know, the episode didn't do too well oh last God. month. The episode st last month stunk, but yeah. <laughs> hey, don't say that about yourself. No. Oh, so yeah. Sorry. The, the the oh the sponsors are rolling in, folks. You better get on board. You know, I can do that. <laughs> but you say, uh, uh, like my, you said talking about prescriptions and stuff like that. I'm not prescribed anything. And here's one thing that worries me. And I guess we get deep for a quick second before I let you go here. My panic attacks have gotten uh -huh. absolutely debilitating. What I'm assuming you go through something similar. I think a lot of yeah, people in yeah. comedy go through go through these stuff. We're very nervy, anxious people, always on our toes. Yeah. Uh, what are some things that you do to combat this? Because like it gets me in a funk. I get bummed out. I feel like I just ran a marathon. I'm exhausted. You know, it's a whole thing. Oh my god. Yeah, I um, when we first started doing Tool, Brittany and me, um, there were so many. I I literally would have a panic attack every single show. I kid you not. Like every single show, I was just like my heart was beating. I felt like I was like I wasn't fully enjoying the shows because I was just so I wasn't nervous about performing. I was nervous that we were on my roof, and I was nervous like you know. Uh, like what if what if all the comics don't show up because that happens sometimes they, people just like don't show up even, you know and and nothing wrong yeah. i have nothing against that because people we book like really talented people who get booked eight million times a day so like sometimes they literally just can't make it and it's hard for them to and so and then and then it's on Brittany or me to like decide okay we have to throw someone up else up instead or one of us is gonna have to do more time or like what and so that can get stressful and um and uh, like, I don't know, I used to have these such bad panic attacks and I've had them previously. I like last year, I, I remember I used to get really bad panic attacks because I was just like working and doing open mics and just I never home. And it was just like a cycle of constantly like just like constant anxiety. And I started taking my meds and then I got off them because I they made me tired. Um, but right now I have like a good relationship with my meds right now. I think I, I take like Prozac, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. but, like the, I don't, I don't care about talking about it at all. Um, in fact, I think we should normalize that so much. Like, I don't see why 
Like, you know, if you feel sick and you're like, oh, I don't feel well today. Like, why can't we say that about our mental health, you know? Oh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, That's a big, like, okay. I think there needs to be mental health days. And I, and I, I, my family has a, like a deep rooted history is actually covered on the national mm-hmm. uh, news. We can't, I don't really want to oh talk about it right now, but uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So fine. it's definitely, it's definitely like, it's, it needs to be normalized, like mental health as, as far as like being able to talk about it and you know if, mm-hmm. like it feels good when people are on twitter and they're talking about like yeah let's normalize it but then it's like when you say you but know my mental we... go ahead but then we don't like follow up with that in real life um and that's something i try to like in my like at my job i try to like normalize that with my i think my job is like the people i work with are excellent like because I, I work at this tattoo shop and i and like a lot of people who who, you know, tattoo artists and, and piercers are just because we're all artists, the very same thing going on. Like people are very open about their mental health, I believe. And I, I love that. I love that community. And that it's like sometimes like like people because I stand outside the shop and people come outside and they smoke a cigarette and they just tell me they're like, I'm just, you know, having a bad day because I just yeah. like, I've been feeling depressed lately and I'm like, I love that we can talk about that so that you don't feel like you have to keep that to yourself and dig yourself into a deeper hole. Right. But, um, but yeah, no, I, the, honestly the best way I'm still learning. Cause I mean, we're so young and I, I, I like, I honestly, I, I, I feel like I'm still at the beginning of my career with stand up. I'm still at the beginning of my experience with my mental health journey through stand up too. I, I go on and off my meds sometimes I'm on them I'm taking them now again but like sometimes I I just I just won't take them for a while and sometimes I I do but I like taking them because that's the biggest thing that's like helped me with my panic attacks really um I'm just worried that I'm not going to be as funny when I'm like in this sort of altered state on medication yeah I used to feel that way and that's why in the past I've gone off it and so I take them at night so that I don't like, it. and I think that might help a little bit. Um, Maybe. But also, you know what I think is so important to remember, and I say this to all my friends who lose their notes, or they lose, you know, they lose their notebook, they lose their notes, they lose all their recordings or whatever. Every joke that you've ever written is right in your head. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's there. You can do it again. You are fully capable of that. Like, I, I feel, and that's why I feel like when people tell me that they like doing shrooms and then writing i mean that's a great that's that's cool but like that should not be the only time you think you're funny you know the only time you think you're funny shouldn't be if you smoke weed and write you know it's like right. you are always yourself like you're always your brain is always there you don't need to you don't need to alter it to get deeper into your soul to write better you know you can alter it for fun if you want like well you know what the hell go crazy but like don't I think it's important to remember like the person, the person who's on the, the, you know, anti-anxiety meds or whatever, that's all you are still under there. Don't lose, don't lose the connection that you have with yourself. Like your, your brain is, is still in there. That brain that's come up with so many funny jokes before is still right there. And um, if you feel like you're, if, if you feel like you're in a bad place with your meds and it's really, it's really put in a big block up, you're, it, that doesn't mean that you've lost who you are and, and you as a funny person is in the past. You know, that just means that you need to go to your doctor and you need to talk with them about finding something better. And it sucks because everything has side effects. But like, I don't know if you yeah. saw um, Gary Goldman's more recent. Did you see The Great Depression? I did not. Okay. Well, you got to watch it. It's so great. Um, he talks about his mental health journey and how he was like really suicidal and like he hated the side effects, but he was like, if I don't take them, I will kill myself. So I'd rather have, you know, a not working penis right. and be happy than be extremely depressed with a hard dick. Basically is what he said. Um, and I think that, yeah, I think sometimes you have to like, uh, I don't know. I think growing up is all about learning that at every turn there's a compromise and you're always going to have to, you know, being an adult, you just, you have to be like, okay, like I, I don't like, um, like I stopped taking my birth control cause I felt like it made me angry. <laughs> and I was like, 
it, like, uh, I feel like I should be on birth control, you know, but I also don't want to be angry all the time. So I weighed the pros and cons and I was like, I'd rather just, you know, uh, like find something else in the future with my doctor maybe than, than yeah. get angry all the time. So yeah, I don't know. That's how I feel about medications and stuff is that like, it's important to, to, like I think it's just all about all life is just doing what you think is best for you yeah all the time yeah. you got to put number one first you got to put yourself first I get it absolutely yeah I feel really that was uh, that, yeah. that was that was really deep and I'm happy and I'm happy you <laughs> said that type of stuff because uh, you know it, it's good to hear that from somebody else who shared the same feelings and thoughts and ideas and it's just like you know we are not alone in this if you're out there and you're struggling with your mental health uh you know you are not alone in this you're not the first person to go through the wall you know yeah yeah it's uh there everybody deals with it and i feel like i i have hope because of what you're saying like on twitter people say this stuff like i have hope that we're getting to a better place like like um Franklin, our future children that we have together are going to grow up in such a happy world. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. I think that, what are their names? Um, be? You already got, you got baby names picked out, don't you? Um, Yeah. Benjamin Chadwick and <laughs> Evelyn. I don't have a middle name for her. but um, Do you really like those like names? That. Yes, I do. <laughs> Evelyn, Evelyn's yeah. a good name. I like the name uh, Lewis for a boy. L-O-U-I-S. Lewis. Lewis. L-O-U-I-S. That's a good name. That's a good name. We can have three kids. All right. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have three kids. <laughs> well, you're off yeah. the birth but control. Yeah. So, I mean, there's that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm ready tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> I hope my dad doesn't listen to this one. Um, <laughs> well, my mom, uh, <laughs> my, mom my, my mom does it. So, it's all good. Okay. Fantastic. Um but yeah, no, I feel I I I I, uh, I believe that in the future, like the next generation, and it's gonna take a long time to get like things completely normalized. But I have a lot of hope that the next generation is gonna like you know grow up with a lot more woke parents, and they're gonna have their own problems because you know the next generation they're all gonna have parents that were like, oh, you weren't there during the pandemic, you know. But yeah. like they're also yeah, gonna be that like heads. yeah, like. Like kids are not gonna. We're gonna have. To, we're gonna live in a world where kids won't have to come out of the closet, and I love that. You know, that I love is that cool. it's they like can just be themselves your from kid the can jump. come home and be dating, dating whoever, and that's not like that. Does, it doesn't have to be like a whole thing. Like mom, dad, I hope you still accept me. Mom, mom, I hope you still. You know, like uh, yeah. yeah like, who am I? Who am I kidding? I just said mom, dad. Like this is 1950. Um, it's true. Mom, I mean, mom, I, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mom, mom, dad, dad, um, parents one parent, you know, I, like, I, I, I have faith that we're going to, like, I think that's really cool that we're going to grow up, like our, like the, the next few generations are going to grow up in a much better world than we are. And I think that's awesome for them. And, and they're going to grow up with a female vice president being in their history, which is awesome. Um, that's true. First, first female yeah, vice president. Yeah, that be, means that they can yeah. do. And I think it's. A, I think that's just a good uh, guidepost to to all the young ladies out there that you can do anything you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I know we're trying to wrap this up, but uh, do you know uh, Sarah Silverman has this really funny bit about um, uh, people? Th- she's like, I think we need to stop telling women they can do whatever they want because. It's like, yeah, I know. Like, why, why would you bring that? (laughs) (laughs) Like, yeah, I'm fully aware. Like, do you think I couldn't? (laughs) That's funny. I mean, obviously, yeah, yeah, she's the best. But um, yeah, I mean, it's so great. It's like you know, uh, opening doors for so uh, Kamala Harris is opening doors for so many, so 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 many people, and um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I I think that uh the future is going to be um pretty cool and it's, i'm excited really to see what the future has happen. in store uh for the country i'm excited to see what has in store for both of us especially you because you my friend objects in motion stay in motion so i'm excited to see what this next year will bring to you you got anything for the people um no thank you so much for listening uh you can follow me on instagram and twitter at claire bear pears she's and a good follow you know. folks i've been following her for a while she's a good follow <laughs> ah thanks so much
Of course. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, of course. And I can't thank you enough for referring people here and, and sending me kind messages and stuff like that. And you're the best. And uh, I can't wait to get married one day in New York. And we'll have these beautiful kids. <laughs> We're going to have this great life. I'm so excited. And you know one thing about uh, modern day parents uh, versus uh, older time parents? What's okay. that? We're not going to shelter our kids and only force them to watch the old Grinch and Charlie Brown. <laughs> You don't have to sneak into your yeah, cousin's yeah. house to watch the, the Grinch Stole Christmas, okay? You do that with okay. me. Okay. That sounds All right. amazing. I can't wait for them. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Franco's World underscore. In the meantime, keep taking care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you when I see you.